Some true crime stories are so shocking and twisted that we're left wondering how some people can be such monsters. This happens to be one of those stories. On March 27, 2011, the body of 24-year-old Vera Regal was found lying on a set of train tracks in Finley, Ohio. Uh, we got to report that we have a train stop right now because they see a naked female body laying in the middle of the track. appears to be deceased. Vera's cause of death appeared to be multiple stab wounds from a very blunt knife. A trail of her clothing was found leading up to the train tracks. The police believe that Vera had survived the brutal attack, only to die hours later from blood loss. With little else to go on, the police began looking into Vera's life, looking for any clues as to who may have wanted to take her life. Vera had a mental disorder, which meant she had the mind of a 10-year-old, thanks to years of abuse by her father. At the age of 19, she met 13-year-old Zachary Brooks and she began a romantic relationship with him. Zachary's mother, Sherry Brooks, welcomed Vera into her home. Sherry was known around town as Charles Manson because she was very good at manipulating people into doing things they wouldn't normally do. She lived in her home with her four children, Zachary, Kevin, Garth, and Chucky. Sherry actually gave birth to nine children. However, the state took her first five children, one at a time, for blatant sexual abuse. The four remaining children would grow up to become gang members while they lived with Sherry, collecting their very own disability checks. Sherry had reached a point where she could no longer have children of her own, and she desperately wanted a daughter. Anytime her sons would bring home their girlfriends, she begged them to give her a grandchild. The same would happen when Vera moved in, and soon she would give birth to her first child, a girl named Willa Dean. After the baby was born, Vera was not allowed to be a mother. Instead, she spent her days cooking, cleaning, and rubbing Sherry's feet. If she tried to touch her child, Vera would receive a beating. Everyone in Finley knew about Sherry's house of horrors. They knew it was dirty with no running water, and the family used buckets instead of toilets. They knew about the pig that lived in the home, and they knew all about the abuse that took place inside. The problem was that every time the police were called, Vera was forced to lie to them. According to friends and family, Sherry realized that she needed to kill Vera so she could have sole custody of the child. So when her cousin Daniel Bixler was released from prison, she let him move in. Not only did Daniel move in, but so did his girlfriend, Nicole Peters. Daniel claimed that he was a murderer and Nicole wanted a teardrop tattoo, just like her boyfriend. When Sherry realized that Daniel and Nicole were the solution to her Vera problem, she hatched a plan with them to take Vera's life. For the next four days, Vera would endure non-stop physical and sexual abuse in Sherry's home. When the family was finished, Daniel and Nicole would lead her to the train tracks where her life was taken. The police had a pretty good idea that the Brooks family was involved in Vera's death, so they began by interrogating Zachary, the father of Vera's child. I won't. You do want a lawyer? Okay. okay. We'll stop at this point. I'm going to tell you right now, you need to get a lawyer, okay? Because what's happening is, if you don't already know, we've talked to everybody, we've got written statements. There's a lot more than just Daniel and Nicole going down for this, okay? I'm going to tell you that up front, all right? Your mom may be one of them as well. All right? I think you know what we're talking about. Yeah. I think everybody, don't say anything because you said you wanted a lawyer. So I would highly advise you, as soon as you get back over to that jail, you better contact a lawyer because, as they say, everybody's jumping on the bus and you don't want to be the last one on the bus. Okay? Do you understand what I'm saying by that? Yep. All right. Okay. And we ain't bullshitting. We ain't making things up. All right? Get your attorney right away okay. and talk to us. All right? After contacting a lawyer, Zachary realized that his best option was to be honest with the police. Accompanied by his lawyer, Zachary sits down with the detectives again. Kind of know why you want to talk to us, right? Um, kind of know why we want to talk? Yep. Can you kind of go back and tell us what happened that day? All I remember is uh, Danny and Nicole was beating on my baby's mama, and they were making her eat, eat the, uh, a bunch of stuff, making her drink soap. Shannon told uh, Danny and Nicole to kill my baby's mom. Okay. Because she, she said that, uh, Shannon said that she was pregnant and Vera sprayed pepper mace or whatever that is. And we never had pepper mace. 
Shannon said that Vera sprayed and killed her baby that was inside her, and which she was not pregnant. And she said Shannon told Danny and Nicole to kill her. So where did this conversation take place at? At my house. Okay. What room? In Shannon's room. Shannon's room? Yeah. Okay. Anybody else hear that? No. Okay. And then what happened after she said that? They waited at they waited last uh at the night time and then took her and did that. Okay. Did you hear him talk to her about leaving or anything like that? No, I went I once I found out all that I, I went to go get drunk. Okay. I think we went back home and seen Danny and Nicole at the house and then found out they were beating on her. And okay, did you, you said earlier that you saw that. Was that, was that when you saw them beating on her? Yeah. Okay, who was doing, who, what was exactly did you see? Nicole and Danny beating on my baby's mom. Okay, How, explain that to me. When you say, when I... They were hitting on her, kicking her. With their fists? Yeah. Both of them? Yeah. Okay, and this was inside your house? Yeah. Where did this take place inside and your house? In the living room. Okay. Who, was there anybody else around when that was happening? No. My mom was, but she was in bed. Okay. Anybody else hitting her? No. Well, specifically? Shannon was. Okay. Did you get that, a couple hits in too? No, I never hit her. You no. never hit her? No. I don't believe I'm hitting females. Okay. So they were hitting and kicking her? Yeah. How, how many times do you think, roughly? Uh, don't know. So Shannon comes back from the hospital, and that's when her and Beer get into it. Yep. Yeah. Said, she said that you. She said you killed my baby and everything that was inside me. Okay. And she started laying off and hitting her. Okay. How was she hitting her? She hit her with a. Well, she started hitting her with her fist and everything, and then she wrapped. She got a belt with a padlock and started hitting her in the back with it. Shannon did. Yeah. Okay. So everybody saw all that was. Shannon hitting on Vera? Except for my mom. Except for your mom. Because she takes the meds and goes to sleep. Okay. Zachary claims that it all started when Shannon, who was the wife of one of Sherry's sons, told Daniel and Nicole that she had lost her unborn child because Vera had sprayed pepper spray throughout the home. The rest of the family, except Sherry, of course, who coincidentally had been sleeping, began beating on Vera. After the beating... Daniel and Nicole would drag Vera out of the home and to the train tracks where her body would eventually be found. The detectives decided they wanted to speak with Shannon next, but she was already waiting to speak with them. Okay, so what brings you up here today? Well, I had gotten some information that, um, that I was getting arrested. Okay. Because I guess um, the interview I did on TV, mm -hmm. Channel 11 News, and I'm being told by a lot of different people that I'm the one that's going to end up going to jail for it. And, I mean, I came up here, you know, to tell everybody because I'm getting harassed on Facebook. And I'm getting called, you know, a killer. I'm getting told that I had a part in it. I didn't know anything about that. I didn't know what they were going to do when they left the house with her. And as I told everybody else, I wanted to stop them. But... Danny put a knife to me and told me if I did anything that he was going to kill me. I didn't believe him at the time because I didn't think he would do it. And, you know, and when they got back and they told me everything they did, I wanted to call the cops. I wanted to get the phone and call so bad. But Danny told me if I picked up that phone that he would do the same thing to me. And I was just so scared. And as you can tell, you can probably tell I'm scared right now. I'm just... I mean, you know, I'm just, I was crying all day today because, I, I mean, and then I got people telling me that I should, I should be the next one to die and everything else. And I mean, I'm just, I'm getting so scared and everything. And I just, I mean, you know, I've never been in trouble with the cops and my, I mean, you can look at my record. I've never been in trouble at all. Okay. And I just, you know, this is scary. It's really scary. And I just, you know, I mean. I don't know what else I can do to help you guys. I mean, I, I'm, I've been trying to go over in my head everything they told me and everything that happened that day. And I thought of a couple more things that, you know, if that would help you out at all. Okay. Of, of what happened. I don't know if, you know, maybe Sherry told you guys or not. 
um, I got scared and then I sat on the bed next to Sherry and I couldn't breathe. I was getting really scared. I was like, I was having a panic attack or something and I was shaking real bad. And then they, um... Shannon spends the next several minutes detailing the horrors that Vera went through in Sherry's home. Because of YouTube guidelines, we've had to leave out most of the graphic details. What's interesting is that Shannon's story is different than Zachary's, and in her version, she was scared, lying in the bed next to Sherry. And Vera was, she was like crying or saying something, and then Nicole comes back out and she's laughing and smiling, and she's got her hand like this on her face, and then I asked her what happened, and she says, you don't want to know. And I said, okay. And then Vera comes out and she's, her hair is all wet and she's covering her face like this, like her eyes are hurting her. And when Nicole was, you know, out of the room, I asked Vera what happened. And Vera said that they put her head in, that Nicole had put her head in the toilet and made her drink the water. And I went up to Danny and I grabbed it, or I like, I didn't grab him because I was afraid to. I went up and I like tapped him on the shoulder and I said, you need to stop right now. And they lifted up her shirt and her back was just, her back was black. I mean, it was black and blue and purple and yellow and it was just, it was horrible and red and I just, and she kept holding her head like this and she had her head down and I thought, you know, her head was bleeding or something. And so then that's when Danny put the knife to my neck and told me, you know, you need, he told me if I didn't hit her that he was going to kill me. So I took the thing off and I, I hit her, I hit her once and it was really like not even hard. It was like kind of soft. I was, I was really scared, so they left, then about a half hour later they came back around 10, 10.05 or 10.15, and they walk in, and I was in the kitchen getting um, the baby a bottle, because she was almost asleep, so I was going to give her a bottle and lay her down, and then Nicole walks in, and she, I, she looked at me and she was shaking and she was like, she's gone. She's gone. She kept, she kept saying she's gone. And I was like, what are you talking about? And I was scared. I was like, oh my God, please tell me you didn't do anything. And she's like, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. And I was like, and I just, I stopped. Like, I, I couldn't talk or anything. I was like, oh my God. And I, I ran into Sherry's room after handing the baby the bottle. And I went to grab the phone and Danny's like, if you call the police, I'll kill you just like I did her. I didn't, I didn't know what to do. I mean, you know, I just, we all, I, I was so scared. I just, I've never seen anybody do that to someone before. And, I mean, I'm just, I, I guess I'm just like really scared. I don't know, I'm just, I'm really worried. I can't sleep at night now because I'm just worried that, you know, Something's gonna happen. <laughs> I just, I'm, yeah, nervous, I guess. Throughout her story, Shannon makes sure to not only make herself look like a victim, but to protect Sherry as well. One thing that remains constant throughout all the different interrogations is that they all make sure to mention that Sherry was not involved. Even if they aren't asked, they still make sure to mention Sherry's lack of involvement during their interviews. This information um, that you've said today, you didn't tell it to me on Sunday when we talked. Right. When we talked on Sunday, I was scared, and I, I couldn't remember everything. I was having a blank in my head, and I think it was because I was nervous and I was scared. And then, you know, I told my husband, I was like, I gotta fit. I gotta tell them the rest of the stuff that I know. You know, I don't want to withhold information because I don't want to get in trouble for that. And I said, you know, you gotta take me up there. I gotta tell them the rest of the stuff. You know, and it hit me this morning that you know I was like, 
I was just sitting in my room and I was thinking, I was like, you know, she didn't deserve this. I, I gotta, you know, I just, I gotta say what, what else happened. And I mean, I was just, I, when I get nervous and scared, I just, I, I draw a blank and I only remember certain things and that's why I left out some stuff on Sunday. But I just, I wanted to come in today and tell you the rest of the stuff that happened. Okay. So. So you decided to come in here on Sunday and, and not be forthcoming with the information that you had. I couldn't remember everything at the time. I was. Uh, Shannon, let's this, this stop that, okay? I don't believe you, okay? I, I would believe more that you were scared than I would believe that you don't remember. Because your memory right now is pretty damn good. Three days later. When we're, when we're, when we're sitting in the room and I'm telling you, we're here, we're, you know, Vera's missing. We want to make sure she's okay. And nothing's happened with her. And you got all this information. I mean, you can't tell me that you didn't remember that on Sunday. I mean, can you honestly sit here and say, tell me that on Sunday you didn't remember this stuff? Okay. Mm -hmm. You said across the table you knew she was dead. You and everybody else in that house knew she was dead. Is that true? No. Um, everybody had their suspicions about it. In the limited time that we have been inside that house, I don't believe for a second that everybody in that house didn't know that Vera was dead. I don't believe it. You're in here because you believe you're in trouble. The detectives ask Shannon to go through the story again, and this time she tells them that Daniel and Nicole both confirmed that they had murdered Vera, and they even gave Shannon the details. Shannon claimed that after the family took turns assaulting Vera, all except Sherry, of course, Daniel and Nicole led her out of the home into the train tracks. With this information, the detectives were able to find and arrest Daniel and bring him in for interrogation. She's 17, you're 21, right? Yeah. We're going to try her as an adult, more than likely. You know, push comes to shove on this, and this does become a capital murder case because nobody's given us what we need. Who do you think you're going to put at the end of it? Mm -hmm. And put it in a 17 year old girl. I mean, that's just the facts. We know what happened. We have an idea of why it happened. You need to own it. You need to grow up and try to be a father to that child. Try. I'm not guaranteeing you that it's going to work, but doing what you're doing right now, I guarantee it won't work. You're going to prison, there's a pretty good chance you're going to go to prison. I'm not going to bullshit you. People do some good shit in prison. People get educations. People learn. People grow. You're 21. You got a whole life ahead of you. We behind bars for a while. Yeah. It's gonna happen. You just get so enraged when you found out she lost her child. Is that ultimately what it comes down to? Mm -hmm. What'd you do? I just lost it. What happened? All I did is spend her six times and then he took the knife from me. She stabbed her too? Yeah. Daniel immediately confesses to taking Vera's life. He explains that Nicole was also an active participant in the stabbing and the disposal of the murder weapon. Now that they have Daniel's confession, they want to focus on what happened in the Brooks home before the stabbing took place. More specifically, they want to prove that Sherry and the rest of the Brooks family took part in the assault on Vera. But some of this has happened in front of Sherry? Mm-hmm. Okay. And where did it happen at? In Sherry's room. In Sherry's room it happened? Okay. Mainly everything happens in Sherry's room. Okay. Because she constantly sits right there by that dress. Right. She don't move much, does she? She's either in her room or in Sherry's room, sitting right there by the dresser, by the feet, staring at the floor. Okay. 
Daniel spends the next hour detailing the horrific events that Vera endured from each member of the Brooks family while Sherry sat in her chair and watched it play out. The detectives realized that they would need more information, so they decided to interview a friend of the family named Alan Cap. And they called me and they told me to come over. I went over there and this was after they did it. What time was this, son? Like nine. Okay, so, so you were at the Manny's house over here? Yeah, for a couple hours. And after they did it, they called me over there. And what they tell you? And they told me that they they killed her and stuff. Who, who, and who killed her? Zach, Danny, and the, that girl, that one girl, Nicole. They told me they did it and stuff. I didn't believe them. And like, I was just sitting there thinking about stuff. I was like, wow, what if this really did happen? Because Danny kind of scared me because they like, if you say something, I'm gonna kill you. And they scared me because they that dude has a tear in his eye and like I know what that means. What's that mean? It means you killed somebody, I guess. That's okay. what that's because they gang bang and stuff. Okay. So like I don't have I don't gang bang or nothing, but that still scares me. I don't like gang bangers. But they told me they did it and stuff and like and then when we went to that uh girl's house, Danny's sister or whatever. When I was outside talking, like how'd you get over there? Oh, uh, we all walked over there. Okay. And as they told me they did it and stuff, I I was like, I told you I was outside on the porch before, like after we left, we came back and stuff. We was drinking or whatever. I went outside to smoke a cigarette and then I was texting and I heard a bits and pieces of what they were saying. And they were saying like, cause I didn't believe it. They were sitting there saying how Sherry and all them guys were begging Danny to do it. And they, were, they they said all the Brooks had something to do, like they were saying all of them had something to do with it, except for the dad. They said that they told the dad the same story they told me. The dad? Okay. Yeah, the dad. And they said that she was getting beat all day or whatever. And like the only reason why I feel crappy is because like I was gonna call the cops but I got scared because these guys are sitting here telling me that they're gonna kill me if I don't say, if I say anything to you guys. They told you that? Yeah. Okay. What would they say? They were saying how what they did and stuff, and then like who, 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 who's they? Like Zach and Danny, they were talking about what they did and stuff, and that's when I really started freaking out. I started crying and stuff, and then, like they're like, man, you say anything, we're gonna kill you for real. Like I'm not playing and stuff. So, did you get the impression Zach was with them when they killed her? What? I I believe he was because there's no way, you know. And I was like, I started crying. I was freaking out, but I, but as soon as those guys came up to the stairs, I stopped crying and stuff to not like let them see that I'm scared. Did he say anything else? No, he just like, man, they really did it. I mean, do you, do you, he said they really did it? Yeah, he's like all that. He said he told me that all like everybody in that house had something to do with that. The reason I got why they killed her is because this is this is the story I got from Zach. Like I'm gonna be straight up. Zach, Zach told me that Vera, because you know how she's not all there, right? Mm -hmm. She took um, pepper spray and she sprayed it all over the house because she thought it was cologne, and it got like it was everywhere. Like this is this is when he called. Like he called me and told me what Vera did, like this is before like anything happened, this was on Friday, like when he called me, he's like, man, Vera sprayed pepper spray and stuff, and she got up er everywhere, it was in my mama's lungs and stuff like that, and he said that, she thought it was what? Thought it was clump. Okay. And he said that, you know, Shannon, I guess she was supposedly pregnant, I don't know if she was, but that's, okay. this is the story I got. Okay. And supposedly, the pepper spray made her have a miscarriage. And that's why they did it. I think she was thinking about when Vera accidentally uh, dropped a brick on her foot. And he said, what's wrong, Mom? I said, bitch, fucking, uh. And he said, what? I said, she fucking threw that rock on my foot and it hurts. Get it off. And I yelled at her, said, you fucking bitch. I said, you fucking hit me as the fucking rock, you fucking bitch. The rock hit on Sherry's foot, and then that's when they were going to plan on throwing Vera on the tracks. 
when she said you need to cut her up, put her on the tracks, then she looked towards Vera, smiled, and turned back. It always happens in mother's room for some reason. All the beatings were in your mind? Yes. Who told you what the cover story was? Sherry? Yes. They would kill her, and I hope they don't. Like, you know, throwing it off. That uh, we would have to have a cover story to protect this family. In the end, the outcome of the Vera murder case would enrage the community. The residents of Finley, Ohio, could not believe that the people responsible for the torture and murder of a disabled woman were given such light sentences or no jail time at all. Daniel and Nicole would both be charged and convicted of murder. Daniel received a 40 to life in prison, and Nicole only received a 23-year sentence, even though she had been just as involved as Daniel had been, if not more. Shannon would only receive a short time on probation for obstruction of justice, and her husband, Michael, would receive 30 days in jail for lying to the police. Garth and Chucky Brooks were also charged with obstruction of justice, and they received a small fine. Out of all the family members, Zachary Brooks had the most violent history, and he received two counts of obstruction of justice, which resulted in four years of prison time. As far as Sherry Brooks, also known in the community as the Puppet Master or the female Charles Manson, she received 120 days in jail for her obstruction of justice charge. Shannon told me that they took Vera up to the tracks and that they de gutted her like a fish and that they left her up there to die. And Shannon said, don't worry about it because she deserved it. After her release, she was caught again committing another crime. This time, it was drug trafficking for which she spent 40 months in prison. Since Vera's death, Sherry's sons have been in and out of prison, mostly for drug charges, assaults, and probation violations. Vera's daughter, Willa Dean, was removed from the Brooks' home one week after her mother was murdered. Sherry did her best to fight for custody of Willa Dean, but when she realized that there was nothing she could do, she told Zachary to try and get custody of his daughter. However, after a meticulous investigation by the state, which included a psychiatric evaluation of Zachary, a home inspection, interviews with Sherry and Zachary, and one visit between Zachary and Willadine that resulted in Willadine screaming hysterically and refusing to go near him, the Brooks were denied custody. Less than a year later, Willadine was placed with an amazing family who welcomed her with open arms. Before Vera died, she left her daughter one last gift, which was found inside the pocket of her hoodie. The gift was a handwritten note from Vera to her daughter. It read, I love you, Willadine. You are a good little baby girl. I am glad to be your mommy. Mommy loves you. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this case. Do you think that the Brooks family got what they deserved? Or do you think their punishments were not enough? Please share your thoughts in the comments below.